glad to see you all. Hey kids, welcome to VVS. We're so happy to have you here. Yes, we're going to have a lot of fun this week. So strap on, get ready, and be excited. Can we hear a woohoo? Woohoo! Because we're going to have a lot of fun this week. We're going to learn so much about Noah, who he was, and what God did for him. Hey, would one of you be willing to come and read our Bible text today? Thank you. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, 1 Corinthians 1, 9. Thank you so much. We're going to have a word of prayer, so let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with us today as we start our journey in learning about Noah. Please help the kids to receive our awesome message, and please help everyone to be blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Welcome to Discovery Mountain Fall Camp. Will the campers be rescued and be safe in Jesus? Let's take a Discovery Mountain Vacation Bible School adventure. Ryan, please promise me that you're going to wear those rain boots all weekend. Mom, there isn't a cloud in the sky. Please just promise me you'll wear them. I'm going to be fine at Discovery Mountain Camp. You can stop worrying about me. Oh, welcome to Discovery Mountain Fall Camp. What's your name? I'm Ryan. Glad to meet you, Ryan. I'm Camp Director Reader. And I'm Ryan's mom. Well, welcome, Mom. Glad you're here. Let's take a look here, Ryan. Oh, man, you're in for a great weekend here at camp. I can't wait. Great. Well, let's step over to the registration table, and they'll get you checked in. Camp Director Reader, I just have a few safety concerns I'd like to talk about. Oh, I'd be glad to talk to you. Hey there, that. camper. I'm Jacob P. Donovan. Or Counselor Jake Works. Hi, Counselor Jake. Hey, this is Wyatt. He's your junior counselor. Hey. Hi. Now, you are in Pawnee Cabin. Here's your welcome packet. Head on over to uh, the... Jake, aren't we forgetting something? All right, thanks, Wyatt. Dinner, do not be late, because Cook is making the uh, best... No, Ryan, step over here for a minute. Uh, do you have any allergies? Um, no allergies. Um, any contraband items in your luggage? Contraband? Uh, here. Take a look at this list here. Just put your initial at the bottom. Scratch trail mix from that list. No, trail mix stays. Okay, all done. Now what? Oh, well, Miss Tamara and Miss Wendy over there are doing sign-ups for the drama class. 
It's tons of fun. Each year we act out a Bible story. Oh, what's the story this year? Oh, it's Noah and the Flood. See, the waters rose. Hey, Counselor Nina, he's talking about Noah and the Flood. Oh, yeah. That's our drama production this year. The rain poured down and the lightning flashed. Madison, you have to be in drama. You're a natural. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, junior counselors Jamie and Wyatt, please take our campers over to the drama table. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Jake. Jamie is my junior counselor. Uh, you're right, you're right. Jamie, do as Nina says. <laughs> Go. Let's go. Hey, Nina, is Ryan wearing rain boots? <laughs> yeah, he is. He's ready for the drama production already. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I can assure you we're taking every precaution necessary. It's just that I was reading online. Excuse me for interrupting, but uh, may I have a word with you, Reader? I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Simon. He's the uh, founder of Discovery Mountain Camp. Uh, could you excuse us for just a moment? Of course. All right. Mr. Simon, the word is getting out. She heard over the radio. No, no, no. Don't get ahead of yourself, Reader. I'm tracking the storm, and if there's a warning issued, I'll know about it. The sky's clear, at least. Yes, but we still need to remind everyone about what to do in an emergency. That's right. Okay. This would be a great time to make that announcement. Okay. May I have everyone's attention, please? Welcome to Discovery Mountain Fall Weekend Camp. <laughs> now, I'm George Simon, and I want you to have fun and be safe. Now, Camp Director Reader. What do we do in an emergency? Oh, that's a great question. So if you hear the sirens, meet at the flagpole and listen for instructions. All right, everyone. If we hear the siren, then we meet at the flagpole and we listen for instructions. Terrific. Ryan, did you hear that? That's where you're gonna have to go if there's a flash flood warning. Oh no, this is going to be a terrible week. Well, a long, long time ago, as all you children know, Uncle Noah built himself an ark. For forty days and nights, the rain was sure a fright. Those animals nearly tore his house apart. Oh, the duck went quack, the cow went moo, the rooster cocked a the doo. The old dog catcher made a terrible round. The old pig squealed, Billy felt bad. Bullfrogs ain't biggest ring we ever had. Uncle Noah's are the man house now. The cattle and horses and the fowl of the air. Even the long-eared donkey was there. Oh, the duck went quack, the cow went moo, the rooster cocked a doodle doo. Over there at Uncle Noah's are. Well, look who we have here. Someone from the Bible Times. Can anyone guess who this is? Noah! It's good to meet you. My name's Bailey. It's so good to meet all of you. You're my children's children's children. And you all believe in the one God? It's so important that all of my great, 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 great grandchildren believe in the one true God. Well, we do. Okay. Nothing, nothing makes me happier than knowing that all of you believe in the one true God. I feel the same way. There's nothing more important to me than knowing that the people that I care about will be in heaven with me someday. Well, it's bad enough that so many people in my day didn't follow God. It's even worse that some of them did terrible things. Worse than you could possibly imagine. A man might seem civilized enough most of the time, but then he would kill a person just to steal his lunch. That's what happens when a person turns his back on God. He only cares about what he wants for himself and 
doesn't care about anyone else. Sounds like a scary way to live. Well, people need to understand God is always with us, even if we don't see him. When we feel God's presence all the time, when we, then we make better choices and we get over them. People need to understand God is always with us, even when we don't see him. When we feel God's presence all the time, we make better choices in life. Is that why they call it walking with God? Absolutely. When I was a child, I made up my mind to walk with God every minute of every day. Sometimes I messed up and was discouraged, but then I recommitted my life to God Carry it on. That's the important thing. I guess making up your mind to follow God and sticking to that. And remember to teach that to your children and your children's children. Well, that's what we're doing right here. Well, I'm glad the message is still being passed on. So what was it like for you to walk with God with so many people against it? Well, I tried my best to follow God's will for Hundreds of years, even though I couldn't see him or hear his voice. Hundreds of years? Yes, hundreds of years. Anyway, people laughed, but they needed help. I was always the first person they came to. Then, after I helped them, they would laugh at me again and tell all their friends that I was a loser. That sounds really tough. Well, then one day I heard a voice call my name. It didn't sound like any person that I'd ever heard before. The voice was like music full of joy and sorrow and power and tenderness. I was surrounded by a beautiful light. I knew it was God speaking to me. And I fell on my face on the ground. Then God said, do not be afraid, Noah. You have found favor in my sight. You really heard God's voice? God told me his heart was grieved to see his children turn from him. They were destroying themselves and the earth. The pain of seeing all this was more than God could bear. I could tell by his voice that God's heart ached for his children. I felt tears start to pour forth from my own eyes. Sobs came up and caught in my throat. I knew the world had become a terrible place, but... You know, I didn't realize how much it actually affected God. It never occurred to me how this was breaking his heart. Oh, I never thought of it that way. God explained that in 120 years, a flood of water would cover the entire earth. All the people and animals would die. But God wanted to give each person every possible chance. And he, and he wanted to save animals as well. And God said he wanted me to do two things. First... God wanted me to build a heart. That's a really big boat. Anyone who wanted to be saved could get on the get on the ark. Simple as that. For them anyway. For me, it was not so simple. I needed to build that ark. And it needed to be big enough to have room for all the people, every kind of animal, and a whole lot of food. <laughs> Second, God wanted me to warn everyone about the flood and invite them on the ark. Anyone who chose to be lost in the flood would have uh, Second, God wanted me to warn everyone about the flood. And anyone who came onto the ark would be saved. All those that did not would be lost forever. And there would be a blank spot in God's heart for them. Well, you must have done what God said, or we wouldn't be here today. Well, God called, and I answered. I told him, yes, and got right to work. That was the beginning of the adventure of a lifetime. God calls. That's the theme for today. And I have a friend, Professor Fossil Rocks, who felt that God called her. Although God spoke through the Bible instead of with his voice, it was as if a beginning of a adventure of her lifetime as well. Fossil rocks? You mean like rocks with fossils in them? No, no, no. F-A-S-C-I-L-R-A-C-H-S, -S Fossil Rocks. It's her last name. How many names does a person need? <laughs> I've, I've only got one. Things are different now. Anyways, Professor Fossil Rocks lives on a remote location and works in her laboratory if she's not 
hiking the Grand Canyon or climbing Mount St. Helens. The Grand Canyon? Hmm. There was no Grand Canyon in my day. Like I said, things have changed. My friend, Professor Fossil Rock, has been participating with this through satellite or a link or something. But I don't get to see, see her very often, but I text her on my cell phone every day. Uh, test? Uh, cephalo? I don't know where to begin. I'll just show you. There's this Bible verse that she sent me. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians 1.9. And now I'll ask her a question, and she'll text me back, eventually, when she has a few minutes. When you first felt God call you, how did you know what to do next? That's clear as mud. What's clear as mud? The Bible verse or the question? Neither. It's that thing in your hand. Never mind, we're running out of time, but if you'd like, I can tell you more of my story when I come back. That'll be great. I'd love to know what it was like building the ark. See you later, alligator. Oh, in a while, crocodile. Uh, real soon, baboon. Uh, in a wink, blue-tailed skink. Let's see you around, old greyhound. Toodaloo, cockatoo. Keep it real, cockatiel. Time to sail, humpback whale. I'm out of rhymes, so oh ancestor of mine. Oh, time to go, Buffalo. Ha <laughs> ha, I win. <laughs> Hello. Today we're going to work with our craft for day one. Our theme for today is God Calls. Okay, we're going to be making rainbow rhythm ribbons. So you're going to find ribbon and these elastic things in your bag. You're going to take your ribbon and you're going to lay them out in the colors of the rainbow. A good way to remember that is the name Roy G. Biv. Roy is for red. O is for orange. Y is for yellow, G is for green, B is for blue, I is for indigo, and V is for violet. So when you have all those in order, you're going to pick up your ribbons, put them all together, and then you're going to fold it in half, find the middle, have a little loop there, take your elastic, put that over top, Put your finger here to hold it, take the tails, and you're going to go through that loop that you're holding and bring it through like that. And then you can tighten it down. There you have your rainbow rhythm ribbons, and you can use those when you do the songs tomorrow. Also in the bag, you will find a piece of paper that is for the craft that you will be doing with Professor Fossil Rocks. Enjoy, bye.
Hello, boys and girls. My name is Estonia Fasselrax. F A S C I L R A C H S, just like it sounds. I earned BS in paleontology in my country, but it feels so disappointing. I show you. Too many people have agenda. They invent intermediary fossils that don't exist. But missing link, still missing. By the way, when I say people invent, I mean lie. I want to know truth, not lie. My pen pal Bailey say, truth shall set you free. I decide to come to America, search for truth in land of free, home of brave. So I come to land of milk and money and earn the PhD in geology, not paleontology. I think maybe people not lie about rocks like they do about fossils. My professor teach about rock layers. He say many, many thousand years old. One layer laid down underwater. Time pass, next layer laid down underwater. My professor show map of tapete sandstone, cover much of North America up to 230 feet thick. Tapete's only one layer, many layers like this all over the world. How all world covered with water? I want to ask professor. I look around, everyone take the notes. So I say nothing, I take the notes. Then professor teach about the turbidite deposits. Turbidity current is underwater landslide. Some seafloor sediment is picked up by landslide and the turbulent current stir it all around. It's called the turbidity current because of turbulent nature. Underwater landslide races down slope, carrying sediment load in tumbling cloud of mess. As current slow down, it no longer have energy to carry load of sediment. I show you. See my jar? It has been settling. I shake up for you. Oh. And see, as it slow down, the big pebbles and the, the grains of sand and then the smaller grains of sand and on the top, the silt, and you let it sit for a while, it will make another little layer of silt. Then another pulse, the same thing, can deposit many layers if big turbidite. Professors say turbidite deposits all over the world. How can this be? Need ocean over all land. I want to ask professor. But they look around and everyone is just take the notes. So I say nothing. I think maybe my English not so good. So I just take the notes. I want to know truth, but feel afraid about ask. My friend Bailey, not laugh at me. Bailey say, you want the truth set you free? Read the Bible, Bible have truth. I say, Bible about the faith, science about the fact. Bible not explain paleontology and geology. Bailey say, you want to know truth or not? Look and see. So I start at the Bible beginning, the book of, uh, what is book, first book of Bible, you children know? Come on, you know, Genesis, yes. Um, first book, and what I read is very surprising. First chapter is explain why missing link is still missing. Because God create. By chapter eight, I see how layers of rock lay down underwater all over the world. It's because of Noah's flood. Bible answer my questions about the paleontology and geology. Who knew? But this is not what my professors teach. I not know what to do. Next, it, it, it was a real problem for me at this time of my life. Still, I look back and say, this is beginning of how God call me. Speak of call. My pen pal Bailey is text pal now. We text each other every day. Bailey is interviewing Noah today, but I expect call any minute when they have break. Now, I have puzzle for you in, in meantime. So I show you a strip of paper cardstock. See, it has two sides. One say, God calls because he loves me. Others say, I answer because I love God. It have two sides. 
if I read God calls, I have to turn over to read I answer. I am willing to guess someone out there know how to make all one side, not two. This is famous puzzle. Make strips so you can keep reading from one to other, over and over. You will want a tiny piece of tape. Please pause DVD and try for yourself. Then come back and we will talk about. Okay, anyone out there know this famous puzzle? If not, follow me. Take strip, give half twist, and then tape. It's called Mobius Strip. There, little piece of tape, and it hold it in place. Now I read, God calls because he loves me, and keep reading, I answer because I love God, and then God calls because he loves me, and I answer because I love God forever and ever, amen. Someone in your group maybe see this puzzle before, and maybe even no name. Mobius strip. If that is true, I want to tell you something you maybe do not know. Professor Mobius, whom Mobius strip is named for, was homeschooled until age 13. Not only that, he was descended from famous Christian reformer Martin Luther. See, you pay attention, you learn something new every day. Next time, I tell you how God helped me resolve the conflict between Bible and my professors. Bye for now. Did you sign up for the drama production? No, I was too busy hiding. Oh, don't worry about it. I don't think anybody noticed your mom call out to you but you. Hey, those boots are sweet. Really? Yeah, you a fisherman? Not really. I'm Seth. I'm Ryan. All right, potty campers. Uh, Seth, check. Uh, Connor, check. And Ryan, check. Attention, Paiute Cabin campers. Line up right here behind the one and only Jamie Simon. That's me. Madison. Oh, here comes Nina. All right, check. Amanda, check. Uh, Haley, check. Hey, Madison, that's my sister's name. Really? Haley is my cousin's name. Really? We're, We're gonna, gonna be best friends. friends. 
Best friends already? Ah, oh, I love camp. All right, guys, listen up. I have a few important announcements. Hey, he's going to tell us what to do if there's a flash flood. Like, that will never happen. Hey, hey, guys, guys, listen up. Come on. 504 is dinner. You don't want to be late. Trust me, all the garlic bread will be gone. Counselor and Jake is the best four. counselor. Yeah, Connor, right? Yeah. Hey, Connor, this is Ryan. Hey, guys, what even is a flash flood? It's where, like, there's a really big storm and it rains and the rivers get full of water and then, boom, water everywhere. That can happen at Discovery Mountain Camp. Nah, there's not even a cloud in the sky. But if it did rain, yeah. Ryan here is ready. Go boots, dude. Thanks, but like you said, there isn't even a cloud in the sky. Right? Is there a storm brewing at Discovery Mountain Camp? Join us again tomorrow to find out in part two of this Discovery Mountain Vacation Bible School adventure. All right, kids, did you enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah. Very yes. good. So I want to know, what did we learn today from the lesson? God, God calls, calls us. us. What? God, God calls, calls us. us. Oh, I see. Very good. Well, why don't we have a closing prayer and thank God for today? Jesus, thank you so much for this wonderful time that we've had. Be with us, and may we always enjoy the wonderful lessons that you have for us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, hey, kids, we want to invite you to come back tomorrow and join us again where we can learn more about Noah and Dr. Fazelrock.